Welcome back on this Independence Day as members of our armed forces are being honored and celebrated at the White House and around the country. The U.S. military is in the middle of what is a massive recruiting drought. In 2022, the U.S. Army had its most difficult recruiting year since it ended the draft in 1973. Other branches are struggling, too, leaving the Army, Navy and Air Force roughly 30,000 recruits short of their goals. There are all sorts of explanations for the shortfall, including the pandemic, a tight labor market. But one reason appears to be the experiences of veterans themselves. According to The Wall Street Journal, more and more veterans are urging family members against enlisting. That does not bode well for an army where nearly 80 percent of all new recruits have a family member who served. And joining me now is the retired Army Colonel Jack Jacobs. He is, of course, a Medal of Honor recipient and an NBC News military analyst. Colonel Jack, on this holiday, as always, we say thank you for your service. And this is a heck of a headline about the all-volunteer force in the U.S. right now. The former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mike Mullen, told the Wall Street Journal about uh, prospective recruits. He said the following, influencers are not telling them to go into the military. Moms, dads, uncles, coaches, pastors do not see it as a good choice. What's your take? Well, it used to be a good choice, and we had uh, generations of people joining the military because previous generations had. I did because my father had served in the Second World War in the Army in New Guinea and the Philippines, and I thought it was my obligation to serve. But a lot has happened since we decided to have an all-volunteer force. The result has been far fewer people going into the military to start with, which leaves far fewer people trying to influence those who, uh, those who would otherwise come in. It's interesting to note that a very large percentage of people who enter the armed forces now, something on the order of 78 or 79 percent, have a family member who has served, but only 30 percent have a parent who served. And that mm. number is coming down, too. In an environment in which uh, you could do just about anything and make some money, coming into the military seems to be an option that not many people are selecting. Well, you make a good point there, right? And now there's this new competition for those individuals, for those potential recruits right now. We're often going into the military as a way to sort of secure your future. Um, your education would be guaranteed. It'd be paid for. But now there are a lot of other routes that young people in this country are finding to do uh, to do that separate from the military. And it's not just that. There's obviously sort of a fatigue associated with the recent wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So how do you flip the switch on this? How does the military change this trajectory? Well, it takes leadership. Just about anything you want to accomplish, whether it's in this environment or any other kind of environment, takes leadership. And we have not had leaders who've done a very good job of convincing uh, the rank and file of the American public, uh, that if you're lucky enough to live in a free country, you owe it something in the form of service. What's happened now is that so few people are serving, not because necessarily recruitment is down, but because the requirements of the service are such that we are uh, taking only volunteers and we don't have a draft, is that a wide gap is opened up between those who are serving and those who are being served. Statistically, mm. most Americans do not know anybody in uniform. This is a really dangerous situation when you're separated from those who, in some cases, are risking their lives to make sure that you remain free and the United States achieves its foreign policy objectives. The only way this will change is, is through leadership. It's interesting to note, for example, that more people were killed on 9-11 in New York City than were killed mm. at Pearl Harbor. And yet on the 8th of December, 1941, hundreds of thousands of young people streamed to reception stations to, to go uh, defend the country. That did not happen after 9-11. At the end of the day, I go back to what I said before. It takes leadership. Right. And if you can't motivate people to go defend their country uh, after 9-11, then it's going to take extraordinary leadership to change that. Yeah, notably, remarkably, a lot of the people you'd be recruiting, though, to be fighting or to joining the military were not even born when 9-11 took place now 22 years ago. And this is a bigger issue, not just about recruiting, Colonel Jack, but it's also really about America's military preparedness going forward with these 
emerging conflicts or competitions with China and Russia. So what does it mean for our readiness? If we went to war today, say China decides to go into Taiwan, how confident are you that we have the personnel that we need, plus personnel sort of in the pipeline in place? Well, I, one can't have very much confidence in the current circumstances. Among other things, the military's uh, discovered that a, a fairly significant proportion of people who even want to come into the military are not physically capable of being in the military or who have mm -hmm. rap sheets, uh, drug problems, and, uh, and so on. It's, it's very, very difficult to even get people who are qualified who want to come in. Uh, the second thing to keep in mind is some surface services are far more uh, vulnerable than others. You can make army units smaller and so on, and they can or can't do their job. But at the end of the day, if you go into right. some place like the Navy, which is heavily equipment-centric, you got to have people in the right military occupational specialties, and we don't have those. Yeah, it's a good point you made, Colonel Jack Jacobs. Always a pleasure to be with you. And again, a happy holiday to you and to your family here. Thank you again for your service. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.